Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I sure appreciate you stopping by. We got big plans this weekend. All right, as you can see, Trudy is all loaded up, hooked up, ready to hit the open road. It is May, May 28th, 2021, the Friday of Memorial Day weekend. And I can't believe it, but four days ago, I booked a site <laughs> for, for this whole weekend quite impromptu so we're going to get on the road and we're going to head west and this weekend we're going to be exploring historical forts starting off with fort griffin state historical site so let's get on the road hit the fort griffin Trudy Thunder. I really am, am pleased with the drive. And compared to Miss V, the, the Vesta on the van chassis, you know, that, that was, it was always work driving. No matter whether you're in the city or on the road, the, the highway, you're, you're, you were working. Now I'm just kind of kicked back and relaxed. Uh, I've got the cruise control set, engine brake on. We're averaging, I've got a cruise control set at 69. We're getting 9.3 miles to the gallon. Towing the F-150. That's more than double the, the mile MPG that we got on the, the Vesta uh, on a flat surface, no wind. I like it. Yeah, it's very nice and it's quiet. That, that's one of the things I like the best about it is you don't have all that background noise that we had in the Vesta. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking and focus on the drive. Fort Griffin, State Historical Site Campground. We're in site number 20. It's kind of weird the way they do it here. You, you, it's kind of like the old Texas State Park system where you reserve a water electric or full connection site and then it's first come, first serve. So we're in site number 20. It says it right there on the pedestal. It's a water, water electric site. All the full connection, full service sites were, they were reserved. But that's okay. I don't need sewer connection. I have a dump station. Very isolated little site here on the, right on the river. That's the Clear Fork Brazos River. But you'll notice it's kind of backwards. So the table and cooking stuff is all over here and the power pedestal is there and the river's on the other side. So we do have a 
a fire ring cooker, a charcoal cooker, a picnic table. And then of course we have power and water. And during more pleasant times, well, before we go there, there's a creek on this side. I think that is Mill Creek. And then on this side is where the Clear Fork Brazos is. And I think during temperate weather, uh, this might not be a good site because there's a a lot of kayak activity on from this from and this park is a destination for kayakers and this is one of the few points where you can access the river Apparently, uh, apparently not. I guess you could scramble down the bank. Yeah, that's, that's not much river access there. But I might be able to do some catfishing. I have some catfish bait. It looks like it might be a little, a little more slow over there. It's way up. And what do they mean by clear fork? That's not clear. All right, so now we're gonna go back up this, this heinous set of steps. So st stay tuned, more to come. So if you choose to pay a visit to Fort Griffin, you want to make sure to pay a visit to the flat or the, the what was once the flat. Now actually, this is a marker for the Great Western Trail. This was a cattle trail. It was very important to moving Longhorn cattle from the north to the south in 1874. And that's where they crossed the Brazos down here. Hopefully we're going to get to see the bridge. Uh, the frontier town of Fort Griffin, also known as the Flat, was here. And it had a reputation that, uh, it's my understanding, superseded uh, Dodge City. So let's, let's go see some stuff in the Flat. So the Flat... Uh, there was a lot of, a lot of, a lot of lawlessness that went on. Doc Holliday and all of them folks came through the flat. The citizens finally got tired of it and they built a jail. This is the jail they built. Not very big. Not sure how, how well it's going to come through uh, on the camera. <sighs> There we go. That's that's a better look at it. That's what uh, 12 by 12, maybe 10 by 10 inside. And at one time they had 18 people <laughs> incarcerated in there. That would have sucked. Let's go find a bridge. So to get to Fort Griffin and the flat back in the day, you had to cross the Clear Fork on the Clear Fork Brazos. And this was the spot to cross the Clear Fork Brazos. Now someone posted on Google some someone made a comment that Doc Holliday had crossed this bridge. I don't know about all that. I don't know how old this bridge is. I guess it's possible. I don't know how safe it is either. <laughs> I 
it's a pretty wide span suspension bridge I don't guess another 220 pounds is gonna make that big a difference but you can see why they needed a bridge to get across especially this time of year let's go see some more stuff so at Fort Griffin State Historic Area there are two two ways to get down to the Clear Fork Brazos and both of them are through campsites now you saw the one in my campsite and these folks were kind enough to let me slide through here so we could check out the other one now there are no handrails and it's quite a ways down but we're gonna check it out certainly not ADA friendly this is actually a little little easier to access the bank of the river than over at site number 20 you can see that river really gets up so there you have it this this is actually probably <laughs> This is really the only place where you can access the water. But you gotta go up and down. All right, let's go see some more stuff. Coming out to Fort Griffin, I keep wanting to say state park, but it's not a state park. Coming out to Fort Griffin State Historic Site to camp, know that there's not real, you don't have cell service unless you're using a repeater. I have the Wii Boost pointed in the same direction as that antenna, and I have four bars on the jet pack and two bars 4G on the cell phone without the Wii Boost. This is the primitive tent camping area. Under the mesquite trees, they, they keep it well groomed. There's a whole, there's a big, big group spot back here. There's water. There's about a, a, I don't know, maybe a dozen places to pitch a tent. And you can do a big communal fire or you can have your little private fire right here under the mesquite trees. All right. Some cool stuff about to happen. Stay tuned. But of course, no visit to Fort Griffin State Historical Site would be complete without coming to check out the historical site itself. Now there's a, a visitor center, little museum, and then there's the fort grounds themselves. They do provide a couple of golf carts if you get here, and there's, there's here, they'll give you the key. I don't think there's a charge for those. There's an electrical charge, but not a financial charge. Well, I have little red, so I'm not gonna need a golf cart. We're gonna walk through the museum. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with reading every panel, but you'll be able to pause the video and read the panels should you so desire. So let's go check it out. Howdy, sir. Howdy, howdy. How are you? I am wonderful. How about yourself? Pretty good. Are you camping? I am. Okay, you're feeling cool. I'll let you do your thing. All right, thanks. So we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on, on any of the, the panels. But you can pause them and, and read them should you so desire. The main thing is I want to give you an, an overview perspective so that you can you know whether or not you want to come visit this historic site. The Fort Griffin was, was pretty critical. 
in in the West Western history, not just for Texas but for all of the United States. These frontier forts really were crucial in a lot of ways. At one point, this was a, a Texas State Park. But they reorganized. Was, uh, the locals in the area uh, I had a conversation with someone in Albany this morning, and she was of the impression that this was still a state park. We're done in here. on the high, old highway bridge so there's the, the modern highway bridge this is the old one over the clear fork I 
that's a little narrow bit narrow for my taste to drive across it's actually not the bridge i was looking for i just happened to see it we're going to see a really unique bridge google maps i found the woodson suspension bridge uh, so I decided to check this out while I'm while I'm camped at Fort Griffin. What I didn't appreciate <laughs> is I had to drive on some some county roads, some gravel county roads to get here. I, I thought it was like a farm to market or something, because I wouldn't have expected that kind of construction back in the day. To be to be done on a on a county road. I, I was surprised. So let's go see if we can get on it. All right, here we are. The Woodson Suspension Bridge. Reminds me condition-wise a lot of the bridge, the, the Flat Town Bridge. Actually seems to be a little more substantial let's get these cables pretty solid Pretty stable. I wouldn't want to drive across it. Just saying, I, I would want to drive across this bridge. There was a, I'm, I'm not really a bridge fanatic. I, I think it's cool, you know, old structures like this, but I, I was trying to find out more information why this was identified on Google Maps. I found a website for bridge fanatics, and it went into detail about this part and, and what made that unique and how this was encased in later times in the 30s or something. I don't know. I think it's cool. And now that I've been here, I can say, I've been to the Woodson Suspension Bridge. Where are we? Fort Griffin. We've been staying out at Fort Griffin State Historical Site for a couple days. For some reason I can't get any internet. Not, a, not enough internet to clear stuff out real quick. So I, I decided to come into town. The little town of Albany, county seat, Check this out. Talk about a big horn. I mean, that is a long horn right there. And this it's metal. Oh look, they got that night that that's probably really cool. Alright. The old Sinclair gas station. You might want to check it out while you're out here. We have reached the end of our visit to Fort Griffin State Historic Area. I keep wanting to say Fort Griffin State Park because up until 2008, this was Fort Griffin State Park. Now it is Fort Griffin State Historic Area. Been a nice three days, very quiet. This is, this is a really quiet campground. To sum up Fort Griffin, I like this little campground. This, this is nice. Uh, it's very peaceful here. There's some, some things of interest if you're, if you're a, a history buff or even if you're not a history buff, you, you really ought to know about the importance that the cavalry forts really played in, in Texas and U.S. history. If you're not into that, then this is a nice little camp, campground to spend a couple days relaxing where it's, it's pretty quiet. Although occasionally you hear some road noise. Not too much. The sights are very level and it's, it's easy to get, get around. I have seen quite a bit of wildlife since I've been here, and the coyotes are just unreal. 
the, the songs that they're singing every every night and every morning. This morning about eight o'clock they were singing. I have seen, let me, let's, let's count the wildlife. Two feral cats, maybe feral, they may not be feral, they may belong to somebody here, but I've seen two, two different house cats. I have seen an armadillo. Of course, we're in Texas, I saw an armadillo. A turkey, saw one turkey. One fox, yes indeed, I saw a fox. A big raccoon. Actually, I've seen several raccoons when I'm riding the scooter at night. Couple of raccoons, so be advised. Don't leave your stuff out at night. The raccoons will get into it. I didn't see any skunks. Saw lots of longhorns. Plenty of wildlife for you to see. You know, it's weird, I didn't see any deer. I've seen several dead hogs on the side of the road. I haven't seen any deer since I've been here. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm kind of rambling along. We're gonna close this out because tomorrow morning early, I'm gonna be getting up and hitting the road and we're gonna head south and pay a visit to Proctor Lake. Come along with me. If this is your first visit to Dude RV, I'd really be honored if you'd consider clicking on the subscribe button. And for those of you who have been following along, thank you, I am so deeply honored. That's why I do what I do, that's why I get to come out to places like this. And for my patrons, you guys rock. Thank you so much. All right, y'all come back now, you hear?